Ricklink Series 5 is officially open for voting, and here are all the trains and train-related sets that you can vote for, from smallest through to largest. Let's check them out, and make sure to let me know in the comments below which you'd like to get aboard, and which you think have gone off the rails. The smallest and first is the Mountain Pass Transit, one that may look familiar to you because this 417 part set has been proposed via the LEGO Ideas program before. And it's a nice micro scale little diorama that I do think is colourful and would look good on display because of course not only do we have our little steam locomotive represented there, we also get our cargo ship and the truck and even what appears to be a fossil of a rather large dinosaur hiding in the mountainside. Whilst it certainly can't compete to the grand scale of some of the others that have been proposed for Bricklink Series 5, I am glad to see that the designer has re-proposed this, because it is a sweet little set. Bear in mind there can only be five finalists. You have until July 14th to vote. And of course, these are just the trains. I'll be doing videos on all the other different themes as well. But 417 pieces is small. 4,000 is the maximum, and I believe 400 is the minimum. The average, once they choose their final five sets, will be two and a half thousand pieces per set. So this is very much at the smaller end. But I certainly think that it would make for a nice little display piece. Certainly one that wouldn't go breaking the bank. Up next we have the LRTS diesel electric switcher train. This is based off of the SW1200 diesel switcher train from the late 1950s. And there is also a nod and a wink in here to the Emerald Knight with the LRTS logo on the side. I think it's fairly safe to say that the Emerald Knight is a favourite for most train enthusiasts. Now, first and foremost, this is, of course, a nice locomotive to have on display. But the thing that I always want to know is how easily can it be motorised? Well, thankfully, this one should be fairly simple. The designer has left enough room on the inside for the latest power-up battery pack. So it does mean that we should be able to get this motorised fairly easily. On a uh, parts count, this is 817 pieces and does also come with one little minifigure as well, which is always welcome. I do really like the sand green colour and the nice little bit of gold that runs along it as well. It gives a nice rather elegant splash of colour. Whilst I certainly can't say that it's my favourite out of the ones that we're going to be looking at in this video, I do very much appreciate it for what it is. Stylishly designed, elegantly done, good for simply having on show and of course that all important ability to give it power functions that is always a big tick in the box from me. Number three on the list is this, the wooden train. What a fantastic idea. The designer themselves has put here that it is a deliberate nod and a wink to those early Lego products. And yes, I remember having a wooden train as a little kid and it was one of my favorite toys. I just think this is beautiful. Obviously so simple and yet just so wonderfully colorful. I think it's very evocative. Perhaps dependent upon your age, I imagine that many younger viewers who have never played with or perhaps even seen the little wooden trains that this is based upon, it's not going to mean as much. But for all of us who do know the reference, I think this is brilliantly done. I know that perhaps it's far too simple in a way, it probably wouldn't get chosen overall, but you know what, part of me would really like this to be. I do think it's a wonderful idea, I think it's very deserving of a vote. I would quite happily have this prominently on display on a shelf, and yes, like the little wooden trains of old, when nobody else was looking, I'd get it down and give it a damn good playing with. Moving on, we come to Crane on the Track 2.0. This is an updated design from this designer. And first things first, it does look good. I mean, come on, a crane laying train tracks? A crane train? It's getting me hot under the collar. And this is one that has been updated to now become minifigure scale, meaning that it can be placed on normal train tracks. And indeed, you can power it with an existing locomotive if you want to hitch one up to the front. And this has a lot of playability. Okay, according to the designer, you can rotate the top part of the crane, extend it, turn it, height of the boom is adjustable. And of course, if you wish to, you could connect up the rails and lift those on and off the track too. I think it's a fun concept. It would look great in a lot of city layouts. The change of scale from the previous version the designer put forward is definitely a big improvement. This now appeals to me a lot more than the original version. So whilst there are still ones to come that I prefer, just how good this would look in an overall setup and having the different playability, you know, functionality to it, that makes this a fantastic concept. 
So really pleased with this one. 1,075 parts as well. Decent size, but not too big. Wouldn't be ridiculously priced if it was chosen. So overall, a very good one to put forward. Moving on, we come to our Freedom Commuter Rail Line, the END, Electro Motor Diesel Locomotive. Modular for easy access, removable with the roof, and capable of holding more minifigures than any other train that we have previously had. That is something to write home about. This would be a great addition to a city lineup. I think the choice of colours of the red, white, and blue, perfect for this, goes well against the grey and black. There's some nice attention to detail that has gone into this, and the fact that you can access it so easily makes this a lot more appealing as well. Now, of course, again, this won't include a motor, but there is space to have a battery put in, which is so important. I really don't like the designs that miss that out. 1,113 pieces, again, good size. I'm actually surprised it's not more pieces than that. Cleverly done in the way this has been put together. I think actually I would just like a few more pieces. So particularly on the interior, we could get a few more details thrown at this. Even if it was just an extra 100 pieces overall, it's not really going to change the price of this if it you know, ever did become a finalist. That perhaps would just be my only little bit of feedback. But otherwise, really fun. I would really like to get this running around my city. Then the next entry is this, an electric tram. Now, I do like the colours. The one thing that I have to say, though, is, of course, we've just been given a tram by LEGO recently. There's also a couple of others in the LEGO Ideas lineup, so I would be surprised if Bricklink were to choose this. And let's be frank, whilst trains and train stations have done fairly well in the designer program for the ones that have been selected so far, certainly things like this haven't really been represented. So overall, I doubt it will be chosen. That negativity aside, it is a reasonable piece count, 1,148 pieces. Apparently this is also based off of a tram uh, that's currently on display at the Zagreb Technical Museum, if I've pronounced that correctly, in Croatia. So a little bit of interest there. It's a good looking thing. I never say no to uh, more trams. I think this is nice colours, good little design. Great, of course, that the roof does come off. So a good submission, don't get me wrong. I just really can't see this one actually being chosen. I think it's up against it a little bit. But moving on, we come to this. Over Arches and Waters, a Swiss railway diorama. And whilst overall I'm not usually a fan of dioramas, you know, they have their place. I generally prefer something different. This does look like a good one. Very nicely designed. Certainly wouldn't be shy about having this on show. Of course, it does mean that the majority of the 1,450 parts are not going towards our train, but rather the bridge that it's sitting on. I don't mind that, basically because this is a diorama. I know the likes of the logging railway for Series 2 that's about to be available for crowdfunding, a lot of people were put off by the bridge. But, you know, this is a diorama set. I think it can be let off a bit. I like it. It looks good, but I do know equally that that will put a fair few people off. You know, post in the comments how you feel about it. I just know it's a bit of a mixed bag. Now then, the Heisler Steam Locomotive. This is a pretty looking thing. Made, according to the fan designer who submitted this, to be about 1 to 38 scale model of a three-truck Heisler steam locomotive, inspired primarily by the 90-ton West Coast Special locomotives, the Heisler was the last of three major types of geared steam locomotives built in the United States. I think this is quite a technical build. You can see that a lot has gone into this to really not only make it work, but just capture all the different shapes. It's a pretty beautiful thing, very impressively designed. I just want to say that straight off the bat. I love the colours, the shaping, everything about it really. Piece count wise, it's around 1500 pieces. And, you know, the, the person who submitted this has said themselves they just really wanted to focus on the locomotive itself. It's a good call because that attention to detail, the quality there hasn't been sacrificed uh, due to having to do, you know, additional carriages and that sort of thing. Naturally, it's not going to come with power functions included, but it can fit one of the larger hubs. It can be powered off of that. And I really like this one. It just immediately, the second that I saw it, before I clicked into it, before I even read the title, and I just saw, you know, the little thumbnail size picture on the homepage here, surrounded by everything else, it did immediately capture my attention. I just thought that is so good looking, cleverly designed. I do really applaud this concept. Again, yes, I would want to motorize it. That's always pretty much at the top of my list, but just purely as something to look at as well. I think this really hits the nail on the head. Superbly done. But of course, again, just my opinion. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Of course, our next contender, the European steam locomotive, is certainly not ugly either. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I think this is pretty beautiful as far as Lego trains can go. Now, I suppose a little caveat to that, when I did first look at this, I thought, I'm not sure about the choice of colour, the brown with the black. But actually, whilst that can be rather oppressive in Lego brick form, here it isn't. I don't think so anyway, simply because of the wonderful gold and silvers that are being put through this as well. The splashes of red too. Just those other details of colour really make this pop. And suddenly that brown becomes the perfect colour to have for this. And another one that has had superb attention to detail go to it. It's an eight stud wide 462 locomotive, which is compatible with the large motor and hub. Of course, not included, we know that already. Access is made easy for that once again, and yes, it can run on standard track too, as well as that choice of rear coupler. It's ones like this that if they don't get chosen, I would so like, and I know I've said this before if you've seen my other videos, but I would so like for these fan designers to be able to sell instructions for how to build this, if they want to to be able to sell that directly through, whether it be Lego Ideas, whether it be BrickLink Designer Program, because I would love to have this. And if it doesn't get chosen and it doesn't get made, I mean, sure, I could obviously try and mock something together that's similar, but one, I'm not gonna pretend to be brilliant at doing that. I seriously need to do more mocking and get back into it because to say I'm rusty is a bit of an understatement. But also the fan designers have put in the work to do this. If they therefore want to provide the instructions, I think it's only fair that they should get paid for it. And obviously Lego and Bricklink can take a cut from that. I just think that would help everybody all around. Again, my opinion, I'm throwing it out there. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. Would you support that? Or do you think that it's something that just shouldn't be done? Now then, on to one of my favourite submissions, a classic space-themed transport system. Space and trains together. I mean, come on, that is brilliant. What we effectively have here is a bullet train of the future that is hauling a little rover, a rocket, and a spacecraft. Now, I know that the likes of the space monorail is just one of the most expensive sets and most desired that you can get. Let's be frank, most of us can't ever afford to have that. And as cool as monorails are, something that runs on standard track is cheaper and easier to integrate. And I think this is so cool. Really leaning into the classic space theme was a great shout here. The colours are simply perfect. The concept is grand. You know, LEGO has been doing obviously a lot of space. They are going to be continuing that into 2025 as well, which don't forget is when we would actually see any of these sets. The ones that get chosen as finalists, crowdfunding will open next year. Production will be at the end of 2025. So the fact that they are going to be continuing with the space theme strongly into then, this would go well. And you know, Lego keep teasing us with classic space. I mean, even, even the new colored classic space minifig that we're getting uh, as part of the um, Lego Ideas minifigure prize machine. Come on, I do, I just want some more classic space sets. I want more trains. I mean, I'm greedy. I just want a lot of stuff, but I think this is a really clever and good combination. I think a lot of people would vote for it. I think Lego would look at it, you know, Lego Bricklink, would look at it and think this is something that people are going to want to pre-order, so it's going to be commercially successful. I mean, am I being naive here? The 30,000 limit, assuming they don't increase it and, you know, make it even higher, but the 30,000 set limit on these Bricklink designer sets, surely this one is one that would sell out. This is going to appeal definitely to all the space fans out there. It's going to appeal to all of the train fans. There's obviously a big crossover in between anyway. And I think quite frankly, even for those who aren't normally drawn to those two particular themes, this is just a damn cool looking build. It really is. So I don't mind telling you, this one is definitely going to be getting a vote from me. And I think that it stands a good chance actually of being chosen. Maybe I'm deluding myself. I'd certainly like to see it chosen, but I just think it makes sense. Moving on though, we come to this, the railway crossing. Such a simple and yet very important part of safely traversing your travels on the road when it comes to crossing the track, or of course, from the perspective of the train. Something that would look great in a city setup. You know, it has its own sort of splendor in a way. And I think that the designer has actually described it pretty well. I'm just gonna read this little bit out here. I know I don't normally, but adjacent to railway crossing stands the signal box, a humble yet crucial structure overseeing the smooth flow of trains along the tracks. Inside, a dedicated railway keeper monitors signals, switches and track conditions, orchestrating the intricate dance of locomotives with precision and care. His watchful eyes and swift actions 
ensure the safe passage of trains, maintaining the rhythm of the railways day and night. I think the designers described that pretty well. There's uh, almost a bit of poetry going on there. And in a way, this is a very simple sort of setup. It's the sort of set that could be easily overlooked. And yet, actually, it's a very integral part of any city or countryside setup. I don't think it's been overdone. There's not too many details that have been thrown at this. It's just about the right amount. Good choice of colours as well. Loving the movable barriers. You know, this is one that's great for display and play. It's got both things going for it. And I would really like to see LEGO do this because, you know, we've had stations, obviously different trains. There's not that much out there that sort of fills this void. A lot of it just comes down to having to mock together your own builds, you know, if you are doing your own cityscape or that sort of thing. So whilst it might not be the most immediately attention-grabbing set out of all the ones on here, I think it serves a fabulous purpose and is one that would be popular. Then we come to our interlocking tower from 1885, based off the Pennsylvania Railroad's interlocking towers. And to be fair, everything that I've just said about the previous submission could really be attributed towards this as well, because it's not been overdone again, the design is just right, I love the shaping, architecture-wise, very beautiful, but not done over the top, it would integrate very nicely with a lot of different setups. The pictures of the interior is a little bit lacking to be fair. I can't really judge it off of that unfortunately. It looks like there's certainly some reasonable detail in there but I can't really judge it just based off of that. Exterior wise done very nicely. Good colour choices, really nice shaping. Just overall very true to form. Then from the same designer we have this, the Railroad Signal Box. And I think this one comes down to personal choice because ironically here I've got a much clearer look of the interior. So no complaints there. Great picture. Looks to have been done really nicely. Beautiful shine on that floor as well. <laughs> Clearly keeps it squeaky clean. A lot of mopping involved. Um, I don't like it as much though as the previous design. I think just the shaping was so much more interesting on the other one. Don't get me wrong, this is true to form. It's been accurately portrayed. I just don't like it as much. That's purely a personal preference. This one though is made up of 2,764 pieces. So slightly larger, but similar ballpark. And again, would be a good addition. I just feel that it doesn't stand out as much, particularly on the exterior. So for me, out of those two from this designer, I think I would personally prefer to see this one actually make it through. That's what I'd probably spend my money on. This one, it's good, just not doing it for me as much. Then to our fifth largest, five more to go and it is the blue moonlight train in brick city station the locomotive pulling three carriages here the middle one of which has a panoramic roof perfect for uh stargazing at night and then we also get our little station here which comes with a terrace a cafe and what appears to be a little newspaper kiosk or bookshop down there as well not the most detailed i think it's fair to say but more so than quite a few of the city sets that we've been given recently and overall it is still a big set three thousand pieces now because of that it is going to start pushing the price if it were chosen going to be one of the more expensive ones, quite nicely designed. You do have that ease of access. It would fit in pretty well with quite a few of the different city trains that we've had already while still being suitably different. I'm not the biggest fan of the colour. Again, that's just a personal preference. But the concept is nice overall. I just fear that when these types of designs are submitted where we have both a train and a station, unfortunately, both become a little bit compromised. Not always, there are exceptions, but I just feel that because it starts to become a lot of pieces we don't get as much size and detail as would be nice to have in the station and the same can be applied towards the train as well so my gut feeling here is perhaps lose the station keep the train few changes and then yes i would definitely buy it the station for me is not doing enough or anything special to warrant it being included in this set so at that point it's just going to force the price up. That's my feelings on this. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments below or if you see it from a different perspective. Uh, maybe you can convince me otherwise. Next up, we have this, the Mikado Steam Locomotive. Very gorgeous design. Love the choice of the blue here. 
works very well with the contrasting colors. The shaping is lovely and the detailing is especially nice on this one. Now it is a big model, just over 3000 pieces based off of the K-class locomotives you'd find on the Rio Grande. So roughly one to 28 scale the fan designer has done this as. It's not motorized of course, but there is room for a power up hub and it will run on the L Gorge tracks as well as R40 curves and switches. Again, it's just one of those ones that immediately captures my attention because I do feel that it's been just had some real love and attention poured into it. Well thought through, beautiful looking thing. Would love to have this motorized and running around, but even as a static display piece, there's no denying it's pretty gorgeous looking as far as Lego goes. Okay then, the final three, Bricktown Station is up next. We obviously had Studgate Train Station for that original Invitational round, and then the Brick Cross Train Station uh, for Series 2, crowdfunding which starts in a few days' time. I have to be honest, you know, you're giving me your time here, so I'm going to give you my honest opinion, I don't like this. That's nothing against the designer, but it is a little bare in places compared to both of those others that we've already seen. And they really set the bar very high. You cannot now have any train station going into the Bricknick designer program that isn't going to be compared to those. Not of this size, okay? This is a 3,705 piece model, okay? It is going to be pitted up against those two and compared. And unfortunately, as impressive as the shaping is, I just feel that this isn't as good as those previous two. Also, it doesn't help that we're not getting really any clear pictures of the inside. So I hate saying this, but I don't like it. That is just me though, and I never ever want to discourage anybody because I think it's fantastic when people put forward designs and there are a lot of people who will love this. And if you do, post that in the comments down below and of course go over and support it. It's just for me, unfortunately, I don't like the use of colors here and I feel that it does fall short of what has admittedly been a very high bar. Then the penultimate one is the Autumn Train Roundhouse, the one that we have seen proposed before and one that I would love to see get made. It is something that would be absolutely fantastic to have in a city setup to bring the trains into and get them turned round. It's not the most pretty looking of things, but it is true to form. I would have liked to have seen perhaps some more leaves placed across the roof. It's a very bland looking structure as it is. Again, true to form, I know it's just unfortunately a lot of exposed studs otherwise. I mean, size-wise, what is this? It's nigh on the 4,000 piece mark, which is the maximum for these. So I suspect that's probably why it's just a case of running out of pieces to have otherwise decorated this a little bit more. It's a little bit chunky. It would be expensive if it was chosen. That is the other thing. So unfortunately, quite a few negatives going against this. But that said, it is a super concept. It would be a fantastic thing to have. I, I do genuinely want this. It would be so useful. It deserves to be a set. But sadly, I do think it's too big, would therefore be priced too much. I will be surprised if this gets chosen. It has been proposed before and turned down. So I suspect that's what's going to happen again. And then the biggest one is this, the Empire Station, coming in at 3,993 pieces, so nigh on the 4,000 piece mark. This is a beautiful Art Deco modular. I think it would have a pretty big fan base. Yes, the train is fairly simple. I mean, look, I am a lover of the steam locomotives. Some of the diesels too, but just the general look of the steam ones are what I really like. Some of the city trains are super cool. This is obviously very, very simple, but an elevated railway is always a cool thing to have in a city. They are super fun. And of course, a big draw is this station. Now, I've just said you can't help but compare them to the previous ones we've had from the Bricklink Designer program. This is very different. And in that respect, I do think that there's space for it in your city. And I also feel that this is going to appeal to those who aren't necessarily interested in the elevated railway, but just want a cool modular build as well. That said, commercially, I think it would do reasonably. I can't see it selling out. I don't think if this was chosen that the 30,000 copies would be sold out. It's probably going to be a bit too big and expensive for that, and that might go against it. But certainly a cool build. It's going to look great on display. The playability is super. It's a fantastic set to put into your cityscape to create an immersive world. So another one that is a fantastic submission. But there we have it. Those are the trains, stations, and everything loco related for Bricklink Series 5. 
post in the comments which you'll be voting for. Make sure to subscribe because I have videos on the other themes from Series 5 coming out over the next few days and make sure that you do put your vote in before the 14th of June. Please consider liking and subscribing, that always helps and thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.